Hi there, and welcome to 10.6 Consulting. Today we're going to take a look at dependencies, known as relationships, in Primavera P6. One of the most challenging items when creating a schedule is to build logical relationships between activities. Also referred to as dependencies, all activities should have an allocation of their dependency to another activity in the schedule. In this lesson, we are going to look at some of the basic principles for building dependencies into a schedule. So what is a dependency? A dependency is the universal term for a connection that shows how one activity is dependent upon another in a schedule. In other words, the start of activity B is dependent upon the completion of activity A. Another common generic term for dependencies is logic. For example, when building a house, the roof is dependent on the completion of the walls, and the walls are dependent on the completion of the foundations. It would of course be physically impossible to do it in any other logical sequence, hence the term logic. In that very simple example, the relationships between the activities are obvious and straightforward. However, in reality, most schedulers are working at much greater levels of detail and complexity. In more complex schedules, dependencies can be anything but straightforward. In Primavera P6, dependencies are referred to as relationships. In almost all branches of project management terminology, activities are said to have a predecessor-successor relationship to one another. As this training is primarily about Primavera P6, we will use the term relationships to describe dependencies from this point on. The actual process of creating the most appropriate relationships between activities is the responsibility of the scheduler. The scheduler must be very familiar with the work that is being performed, or if not, should always consult with those who are in order to build a schedule that will be considered realistic. For those who are new to scheduling, we should first talk about the types of relationships that you can create between activities. There are four standard types of relationships used in project schedules. By far the most common is the finish to start relationship. This relationship type describes the following. The preceding activity must finish before its successor can start. In this case, you must finish building the walls before you can start installing a roof. The next two relationship types are also in common use. The first is start to start. This relationship type states that the succeeding activity cannot start until the preceding activity starts. In this example, site work cannot start until safety management starts. In P6, start to start relationships are often used to link start milestones. Start milestones only have a start date in P6, so use of a start to start relationship is appropriate and commonly performed by P6 schedulers. In this example, the start milestone called Notice to Proceed and the Mobilise activity have a start-to-start -start relationship. Mobilisation cannot start until an official notification to proceed is received from the customer. The next relationship type is Finish to Finish. This relationship type states that the succeeding activity cannot finish until its predecessor finishes. In our example, we can see that project management will not finish until all site work is finished. Again, this is a reasonably common relationship type and in P6 is often used to link finish milestones. For example, the project complete milestone cannot finish until the substantial completion is finished. The last of the standard relationship types is start to finish. Start to finish is rarely used in most industries. It states that the preceding activity cannot finish until its successor starts. This can be a slightly confounding relationship type when first encountered. The following example states that the run generator task must continue until such time as power from the grid becomes available on the site. Because of its generally confusing nature, and a lack of real-world situations where this can be applied, use of this relationship type is actively discouraged in many scheduling guidelines. If you'd like to learn more about Primavera P6, then 10.6 offers some great online training courses. 
These courses are written by industry experts and offer you all the skills you need to get up and running as a P6 scheduler. For more information, visit our website at 106.com for full details on how to get started.